little, little. no it's, it's, no intro it's weird there. with no I, intro I can't, yeah. yes, i'm not used to that so <laughs> me neither <laughs> how you doing today buddy oh dude i'm doing fantastic what about you hold on i have i i had i had it all open in the background i heard you twice so say that one more time uh, i said i'm fantastic what about you man <laughs> oh, i'm doing i'm doing great today this is an awesome day for the show you know we have the great kevin altieri here he's worked on the spectacular spider-man stripperella treasure planet but i think everybody's really here to talk about you know batman the animated series batman. <laughs> he's probably at this point i'm not sure if he even really wants to talk about that though he's probably bored <laughs> talking about that but I mean, we talked about it yesterday so but uh, I'm not even. I don't even want to wait. Again, I'm going to say hi to the chat real quick. But I, I don't oh, want to. Yeah. I don't want to hesitate. I want to get. I want to get the the man, the myth, the legend in himself, and that's Mr. Kevin Altieri here. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys? Oh, How are you doing today? Uh, I'm okay so far. Yeah. Well, ho hopefully we bring you down. Or yeah, we'll raise see. you up, whichever one. <laughs> we'll, whichever see this, preferring, so. we'll see how this goes. But yeah, no, nah, I'm fine. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for coming to do this. I love it. We were talking about it yesterday. I met you once a couple of years back at a uh, at one of the local conventions, uh, the yeah. Garden State Comic Fest, which I go to every year. Fantastic. Morristown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, yeah. anybody who has a chance, if you want the real stories the, the, the from the creators, the real stuff, go to those ones. Skip your New York Comic Con. Skip your San Diego Comic Con. Go to the local ones. You get yep. the real deal from those ones. So. Yeah. No, it's like, uh, that, that's actually one of my favorite cons now. Is like the Garden State Con, yeah. and I'm being this, there this year. This, this, oh well, uh, you'll see me there. Uh, this past year, I didn't really get to do much because I spent all of Saturday in Walt Simonson's line because that wraps around the building, and then, yeah. um, and then uh, I blew a tire on my way back and couldn't go the second day, so I, I missed out on the whole <laughs> second day. <laughs> Well, um, but yeah, uh, thank you for coming on. And yeah, uh, thank you so much for coming on. It's uh, it's our pleasure to be hosting you today. Yeah, no problem. I'm glad to be here. So uh, I think the uh, the thing we got to start out with, um, pretty much, you know, the beginning of your career, how you got into the industry. <laughs> uh, we got some slides of some of your early work that <laughs> some of which you rolled your eyes at when we talked about it backstage. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Rambo. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll get to that. Don't worry. But uh, maybe no, actually, actually, your, uh, earliest uh, your earliest days in the industry. Oh well, I mean, I I started out uh, actually doing uh, comics for like Cartoons Magazine back mm -hmm. in like I moved to California in '79, mm. and I was doing uh, comics and trying to survive on like just small film stuff. But then I kind of broke into through with the help of Steve and Charlie Kyoto and you know and uh I worked over at Intervision with uh, Tim Donahue doing uh special effects design for a lot of the stuff in the uh like 1980 81 82 you know a, a lot of TV commercials and a lot of uh movies like Robot Jocks with Dave Allen Oh, um, yeah. yeah. So I would storyboard uh, sequences and I actually got to uh, talk to Charles Schneer and worked on a Harryhausen project, uh, which is kind of a dream come true is to storyboard, uh, you know, stop motion animation sequences for a movie called Force of the Trojans, which never got made. Robot jocks got made. You could all yeah, see dude. that one. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot to do with that. And uh, but, but I, I would do uh, once well, some of the stuff that I would do was. Uh, in order to sell, like on Robot Jocks, for instance, in order to sell the movie, I would storyboard a whole sequence that David Allen could construct with miniatures and with uh, limited live action, and mm -hmm. you know, and you know, things like that. A lot of special effects work. A lot of uh, I worked with Stephen Charlie Kyoto um, a little bit. Of, like I'm on like movies like Killer Clowns from Outer Space. <laughs> you know I, I really enjoy that movie actually you, well, you, thanks. you would like that movie <laughs> yeah no but it's so i was i was like working with different people in um special effects and a lot of those cheap movies that canon and places like that used to put out in the mm. 80s and uh that was my portfolio um but i was a big miyazaki fan although i didn't know who miyazaki was mm. because all i had was these film books of castle cagliostro which had not come out in the United States, of course, but I had like, I would go to, uh, in Northridge, there was like a Japanese American bookstore, you know, yeah. 
and I would get like these film books and I would go, oh my God, you know, this is how you do animation nowadays. Because I was always a big fan of uh, Japanese animation growing up. Yeah. Astro Boy, you know, um, Eighth Man, Astro Boy, Astro Boy, Marine Land, <laughs> Marine. <laughs> it's like just all these, uh, all the, all those cartoons, you know, um, Kimba the White Lion. Um, oh, yeah. Gigantor was a big one for me. It's funny. it's funny from time to time, like my mother will mention those things. I'll be like, You realize you were like an early day weeaboo, like you were into anime, and she was like, No, I wasn't. I was like, Yeah, Astro Boy, <laughs> Gigantor, yeah. you just name those, and it's like, Yeah, she's it's, like, no, it, it, it wasn't called a, it wasn't called uh, anime, yeah, then. yeah it's just Japanese but, animation, yeah. yeah, just Japanese animation. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty interesting how, how big it's become today, actually, and how yeah. mainstream it's hit. Well, the the it's weird. It's not the only difference is it was always big in Japan, obviously, yep. you know. Mm -hmm. And over here, like uh, I mean, the only thing I had when I was a kid was Johnny Quest, which I loved, you know. Mm -hmm. And then they yeah. took that off the air and then censored the hell out of it. And it's like it's no <laughs> fun. It's like I don't even get to watch the giant lizards die, you know. It's like <laughs> what fun is that? <laughs> but anyway, so I was always a fan of animation too, and I, and that was like. I want to do comics. Uh, I want to do science fiction. I want to do special effects and, uh, you know, makeup design and all that. But then uh, Inspector Gadget was on TV and that was something that I used to watch all the time. And I was, because I said, these guys are doing some really nice animation chops, this uh, French company Deke. Mm -hmm. And then they opened up uh, an office in um, Santa Monica, not Santa Monica. What am I saying? In um, studio city. California, which was near where I was living at the time. And uh, someone told me that, hey, they're they're hiring this new uh, French J uh, Japanese company is opening up an office in in uh, Los Angeles. So I went over there, I found the address, went over, it was literally a storefront oh. in Studio City. And I knocked on the door and I look in and it's this big empty it looked like it was a retail store of some sort that they're and there's like four three or four guys huddled around a drawing board looking at stuff and i had my portfolio with me and i and i go uh you guys is this deke d-i-c <laughs> and they're like yeah this is deke it was rudy zamora was one of the producers and i go um are you hiring he says yeah can you draw? It's like, yeah. You got a portfolio? <laughs> yeah. Can you do storyboards? Well, that's what I got in my portfolio. Well, let's see. So I show them my storyboards. Uh, that's for, a great uh, minimum for, requirement. Is, <laughs> yeah, it sounds yeah. like sounds like you're it's like you think you're walking into into a front for the mob yeah. or something. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I show them my portfolio, and I show them like the storyboards I was doing for Dave Allen at the time, uh, which was Hercules defending the cave against these you know harpy vet bat creatures that are trying to you know break their way in mm. and uh they go oh great uh here's a script can you start right now and i said can i go home and take a bath or something first it's like how about tomorrow <laughs> you know <laughs> like now we want they, we want you smelly <laughs> yeah no and they they hired me uh and that was my first job in animation was working on kid video they hired me to do storyboards on kid video and mm. um basically i would get paid to i would i had to the deal was get an act done a week at least an act mm -hmm. yeah. um and i even though i didn't know animation very i mean i intimately i mean i was a fan of animation and i could board it i had my own ideas about it especially after studying miyazaki not knowing yeah. who miyazaki was so i applied that to the boards i was doing and uh started working on kid video and the second season they started bringing over their because it's a french japanese uh, american company at this point <laughs> And uh, they brought in like the Japanese directors from overseas, and I oh. was working there with Dan Reba and Brad Rader, and you know just just all these people that I, I ended up on Batman eventually. Mike Gogan was another guy there, and we uh, it was really a sweatshop. 
<laughs> I mean, it was like it was like ninety when it was ninety five outside. It was a hundred inside. It Jesus. was it was murder. But uh, the the cool thing was that um, the Japanese directors came over. Um, Hirakawa was the first guy that I really worked with. He was on um, Hirakawa San, and he he was actually on uh, like the animation director from Japan. No, and he immediately came over and he he liked my storyboard and says. And he and he and he wanted to meet me, and I go over to meet him, and he's like, looks at me, and he says, "I thought you were a Japanese." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, it's just." He says, "No," he says, "You bored just like a Japanese guy." It's like, so, sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> yeah, no, he said it was, but it was no problem. It, it, you know, it's like we were. It, it was, it was great. It's like so. I learned a hell of a lot about doing animation from those guys, and especially from, you know, with uh, Bernard. Um, f- who was the head of the studio, the French guy, I learned a lot from him about, you know, animation from that aspect. Hmm. So, you know, that was, a, it was, it was, it was crazy though, because, yeah. because we were, we were doing shows like we, you had to do a show a week. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And you'd, you'd kind of like, and, and I mean, by the time I was a director, I worked my way up to director pretty fast because they just needed directors and they needed directors to go over to Japan, you know, and husband yeah. the shows over there. And, you know, they needed they needed that. So I became a director pretty quickly. So they kind of pushed the uh, Japanese work work ethic on you, basically. Oh, my God. No, we were doing a, like uh, we were doing like on Alf and Alf Tales, uh, Ghostbusters. There's a Saturday morning Ghostbuster ghostbusters real ghostbusters show for instance Mm -hmm. we were doing the saturday morning show a whole saturday morning show and you'd kind of have the schedule so that you had three board artists each one doing an act you know and including myself as director but i'm like doing a whole act myself and then you have so you have the show done at the end of the week and then all the backgrounds get done next week, you know, and then the painting yeah. color keys get done next week, and the, you know, and the voices are, you know, it's so everything gets done, and then it all gets married at the end of like four weeks, and that gets shipped. And right. literally, like on Alf, there were times in the Alf Tales, there were times when the show would be, I would be in the editing bay, we'd be editing the final show sometimes without the retakes in because there's no time because the show is going on the air and we're finishing on thursday and it's on the air on saturday morning Oof. so it's basically we're all, like a uh, yeah it's basically like a like an assembly line of how yeah. you were doing it it, was, it yeah. was piecemeal as you went along and then just hopefully at the end the product worked properly and it was ready for to be yeah. distributed but at the same time it's you know the people there it's like me and uh dan reba for instance it's like yeah there were people who were just like yeah just crap it out and get it out yeah. but <laughs> but especially when you have a show like real ghostbusters we really wanted that to come out well you know so yeah. even though say like the one thing that we would do to sell a show um like i remember on starting with jace and the wheeled warriors which was a product driven show you know, and then with mask, they go, okay, Kevin, we got to sell this to Hasbro. So we're going to do a minute of animation, you know, so do something. I'm like, do something with, you know, it's like, here's the, here's the toy. This is what it looks like. This is the vehicle. And they live in a gas station with an underground bunker. Okay, go. Anyway, you you make something up. No, you yeah. know? And it's like, you draw cars <laughs> driving through the desert and shooting at each other and, uh, you know, a guy like escapes in a pod with a parachute on it or some shit. <laughs> and and then, but the one that I really wanted was uh, I was a big fan of the movie Ghostbusters. So we did that, we, and you can see it um, online that promo that we did. That was like, uh, what was it Richard Rainers comes in and says, "Hey, we're going to be pitching to uh, Columbia about doing Ghostbusters." You know, hmm. and I'm like, oh shit you know yeah let, let me add it but we have to have the board done by the end of the day oh this is like at noon <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so 
you got three hours and it's like, yeah, we don't have character designs. We don't, you know, don't, you, they, they can't look like, you know, Bill Murray. Yeah, they can't have the, the, the likeness. Yeah. No. Yeah, because then you have to pay royalties and stuff but, to, the, to the actors. But they got to look enough like them, like the uniforms and stuff. So we know we got the proton packs. We know that we got, so we, we just, you know, banged out, like it uh, did a storyboard, mm. you know in three or four hours some real ghostbusters love in the chat right now yeah no yeah. well it's like I, I mean and it's like that was a good show it was a pain in the ass though and there was no appreciation from uh j michael straczynski you know we had chuck and len who worked we worked with before and they were really the story editors for um the show mm. um whereas joe straczynski was you know handing in like you know, not not bad ideas, not bad scripts, but they're sixty five pages long. It's like, <laughs> I, you know, it's like, and he's sitting there yelling and screaming at us, and it's like, you know, making our lives miserable. But it's like, dude, this is going to be on Saturday morning in two weeks, so yeah, I don't care what you got to say. Go and yell at ABC or whoever, you know, which they did. But then the facts are, I would go and say. You know, script comes in. It's sixty pages. It's not going to fit. Yep. You know what exactly. do you do? Well, we're editing it. You know, that's all there is to it. <laughs> I'm not boarding the whole thing, and I'm not handing it out to the board artists and having them board it. You know, I remember. So, I remember with real Ghostbusters, it was like that was one of the early cartoons that I remember being like really vivid color palettes and stuff, and really oh. like yeah, it was. It was definitely. It had a very unique look to it that is burned into my memory to this day yeah no that was uh that was where uh god i'm trying to think yeah it's like the it's kind of like the same team that worked on batman a lot of us mm. that were from real ghostbusters and cops and uh, we all ended up i mean i was the first one to get hired on batman but you know you know dan reba Brad Raider, John Calmet, the color you were mentioning, the color palette. That's like John, you know, uh, David Carroll. He was like the, uh, this guy who showed up just a kid, you know, my age, but you know, we were kids. <laughs> and he was just a genius with cell paint, you know, mm. good old fashioned painting. It's like, and that's a lot of the color palette that you're talking about was David Carroll. And he ended up on Batman too. And mm -hmm. he was like a he was like an art. Well, he did the color. He ended up doing stuff like Prince of Egypt. Oh, a lot of the early, the first uh, DreamWorks stuff was him. Mm. You know, that's, there's that's movies that I. Yeah, no, there's movies that DreamWorks. Uh, well, you know, it's my ex-wife was art director at DreamWorks too, and I met mm. her. I met her at Deke. We worked together. Oh. You know, so just like a lot of people went, you know went on to bigger and better things sort of so to speak how could it get better than cops though huh i was actually just about to ask you about <laughs> i want kidding. to talk about cops a little bit <laughs> how often did you need to tell people you weren't working on the reality show like how was like i'm sure that happened quite often I, said, i'm working on the show cops and people would be like oh that uh, bad boys you know like yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I, it really didn't come up very much you know <laughs> Because I it's think, like, hey, and it's like in cops, in cops, it's like cops was like nuts because I was directing cops at the same time I was doing Alf and Alf Tales, mm. which was ridiculous. And I was still supervising Ghost, uh, Ghostbusters, like the third season of Ghostbusters. I was still involved and I was trying to not be involved because <laughs> I have to go to sleep at some point. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. But it was like no, it was nuts. It was nuts at how much how much work was done. And I and I, it's, you know, all I can say is resilience of youth or whatever. You know, it's like it didn't I didn't die. <laughs> but but like cops, it was like it was a, uh, you know, I, I I loved the concept, you know, mm. and uh, what we did originally with like the the we, I think I was telling you guys earlier, like I found on my computer the original trailer. Mm which we would do like we did with the Ghostbusters. And I think they actually included uh, remastered uh, 
pro that promo that that remastered um which was on the uh i found that in a vhs copy and it was mm. the only copy apparently that exists jesus but someone actually bought um a barbieri i can't remember uh I think that's how you say his last name, but he he actually found the original film and bought it at a garage sale or something, an estate mm -hmm. sale. And it doesn't have any sound on it, so they married the sound from my original VHS to that remastered oh. one. Yeah, and then they put that on the Blu-ray 4K release of Ghostbusters 1 and 2, and I think they added that. So if you guys want to see that, Actually, I think you probably see it on YouTube. It's probably on YouTube. Maybe. Uh, probably. It might be. But yeah. Those, yeah, so we would do, I would just, you know, bang those out. And it's like we did the same thing for Cops. And Cops originally was much more uh, science fiction, you know, design-wise. But then Peter Chung came on board and he added his, like, you know, his take on the character yeah. designs. Mm -hmm. But originally, uh, that's where, on Cops, is where I met Bruce Tim. Oh, because okay. he okay. was working at he was working at Deke and um, he was doing character design, but uh, Peter Chung didn't like Bruce's character designs. <laughs> because, <laughs> and I don't think it was like he thought they were bad designs, but he, you know, so the original designs were actually much more uh, akin to say uh, Batman, you know, much yeah, much more Alex Toth, you know, in, influence. But yeah. then he got you know the weird character design by Peter, you know which uh which is how the show actually ended up being um hmm. but yeah it, but we had to do syndicated i had to deal on cops was like a big deal because it was a hasbro show it was a very big item for Deke yeah. to do and it was uh pretty successful but we had the saturday morning show just like just like ghostbusters but then there was five episodes a week that I had to supervise in the syndicated. Yeah. So every day. And you got <laughs> the clients. One client's like pissed off. Sunrise, which was a distributor, they're pissed off because there's all this gunplay and there's all these bullets and stuff flying around. Mm. And then I talked to Hasbro, and Hasbro's keep up the bullets, man. More explosions, yeah, more selling vehicles. toys. Yeah, course. he says more, more explosions. So I'm like, do me a favor and you guys talk it out because mm -hmm. so far everyone's just telling me different stuff, but you know, so I had to resolve a lot of that every day, every show there was uh, like, there was one like, of my mods just put up a link to the cops trailer in the chat for everybody okay. out there. The, really? Yeah. Apparently there, it's on YouTube. So son of a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I need to bring this up, though, because I know okay. you rolled your eyes at it. I know you're avoiding it on there. Um, you laughed about it yesterday. We broke. But Rambo, the force. Of oh, freedom, God. I, I have always said that this <laughs> show is part of a representative era that was oh, one of the weirdest animation periods where they were taking properties that made no sense for kids. There was mm -hmm. Rambo, um, Robocop, the Toxic I'm Avenger had a cartoon, and it was like. It was just this time, and I just want to get your opinion on like how that well, came about. Rambo, Rambo was actually that was like the last um, season of uh, God. I was in between jobs at Deke, but Deke just kind of like I just was like, man, I gotta relax a little bit. So at that point, I would like, and they were cutting the budgets like on Alf Tales, the sec, the next season of Alf Tales, they cut the budget by like. Uh, you know, fifty thousand hmm. dollars, which left you in pretty much nothing. And I just went, well, uh, I'll go and it's like, and and my my ex wife Kathy was painting and was working at Ruby Spears. You know, she 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 would come home and have like these pre presentations, and I would go and pick up this presentation piece that she's painting, and I go, um, you know who this is. <laughs> and she go, yeah, it's Jack. You know, it's Jack. He's a nice guy. You know, you mean Jack Kirby? You're you're painting Jack Kirby present. It's like that Jack Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I I ended up working uh, pretty much freelance, but they put me in charge of Rambo, and I didn't realize I was in charge 
because I was just doing storyboards. I would, you know, and I'd have to do like a, a whole show in like three days or something like that, you know. My God. Well, yeah, it was like it was a lot of a lot of a lot of work, and I, but I only worked on a few of the episodes, yeah. and then and then I was hired. Um, I ended up doing uh, for a short time. I was doing Macross mm. um, for uh, Tatsunoko, uh, but actually it was Harmony Gold. So I was doing like uh, Robotech to the Sentinels. Mm. So okay. I didn't really work on Rambo that much. I remember doing like the C-130 gunship stuff, you know, mm -hmm. where it's like the C-130 unleashes on this village with, you know, with Jeeps and stuff in it. And miraculously, there's guys running around. And then all of a sudden, once that thing unleashes and starts blasting the shit out of everything, there's nobody around. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, everyone got to cover. This, oh, so it yeah. had those it had those rules and it's like no it's like it's all about gunfire and it and it was about bazookas and weaponry because that's what the toys were yeah um so you had to show it but you couldn't show the consequences really which was kind of weird mm, yeah so that... but that but yeah but it's like Rambo I I don't know why it's IMDB or whatever. I get like big credits for Rambo, and I'm like, Man, my name was on it. I... <laughs> IMDB is uh, often so. Some of the things you mention aren't shown, and other ones that you that are shown, yeah. you're, it's weird. It, it's mm -hmm. something about the way that they list the credits for people who are behind animated things. Sometimes it just gets it's strange for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, I mean. Uh... Yes, I, mean, I don't. It's like I get I get credit for like I get credit for uh, you know most noted for Batman Beyond. I had nothing to do with Batman Beyond, <laughs> nothing. I talked to Paul Dini and Bruce about the concept at one time, you know. But I was but that was just I was doing Gen thirteen at the time, so hmm. there's no way I could be involved. Yeah, but mm. yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, so I guess that brings us to our uh, our next subject, which is uh, a little bit of Treasure Planet, basically. And oh, no. I only have one question about this, and it's um, how do you feel about the recent resurgence of the 3D and 2D animation mixture, of course, which was, I wouldn't really say pioneered, but it was uh, it was basically put into the mainstream because of Treasure Planet, even though it was used in Hercules a couple of years yeah. before. Well, it was also, they actually started it on Beauty and the Beast. Hmm. Um, which when I, I was, uh, after Deke and after Rambo and that stuff, I was at, uh, Disney, uh, development. I was in Disney development, feature animation development, mostly working on Lion King because the scripts that you'd get at first were very different. So I was, uh, I was working on that and then I was working on uh, treasure planet in development. And uh, they gave me uh, big credit, um, I think, you know, in, on Treasure Planet, but mainly because the pirates really are my designs, mm. you know. But that was actually, I was just doing, uh, I was doing watercolor development, you know, art, just coming up with ideas and stuff. Yeah. And the only thing in the, the part that got me to kind of leave the project was because I was like working with John and Ron. and. Uh, we had the conversation where I'm talking to these guys because I've done a lot of spaceship stuff and mm -hmm. a lot of science fiction stuff and actually worked on two different projects that were supposed to be live action of Treasure Planet. Oh, nice. yes. Yeah. Titan AE was actually originally titled Treasure Planet. Oh, wow. It or not. Yeah. I mean, I, I believe it. There there are some yeah. uh, some pretty simi like good yeah. similarities with it. Yeah. But when I'm when I'm there, and it's like the the things that we all bonded on was like, oh, we got to make this. The color palette is like N.C. Wyeth, the Brandywine School, mm -hmm. you know, which they really really succeeded um, with that look. But then I'm talking to them about, you know, as they're describing an action sequence that, um, you know, we're kind of coming up with stuff about, you know, literally doing it. Literally, are doing a. Uh, interpretation of treasure island we really yeah. are you know so it's like we're staying with the ncy with color palette and all that and then as mm -hmm. we're talking i go wait a second you guys are we talking about open deck ships in outer space <laughs> and they're like yeah 
I'm like, you can't do that. He's like, why not? It's like, it's the fun of it. And I'm like, well, it's like, but kids know that you can't breathe in outer space. It's like, oh, it's like <laughs> is it a force field around them or something? I mean, you wouldn't do it. <laughs> you can have solar sails and all that stuff. But yeah, but it's like, I mean, oh my God, you know, anyway. Yeah, I mean, the ship but is the, over there. I think the, you can the, see the, it. <laughs> That's that's the old that's the old uh, oh it's made for kids who cares but then like someone brings up the fact that kids actually have a logical thought process and it's like ah yeah. don't worry about it <laughs> yeah no kids know what outer space is you know <laughs> it's like I mean Star Trek has existed you know it's like oh, yeah. I just wish I could have seen the faces when you mentioned that to them when you were like yeah you can't there's there's no air how would we even use sails <laughs> like yeah. stuff like that like the, yeah. No, you can you can have sails. It's like, but you know, I was saying like, go for more. Like, like yes, the ships are reminiscent of frigates of you know seventeenth and eighteenth century frigates, but you know, you know, it, the sails are solar sails. You know, so yeah, you know, whatever. But I mean, the film is really damn good looking. You know, oh and yeah, it, and it, and it is a good movie, and it's like, and that's something that I. It was is a rough place to work, and it was didn't pay that well at the time hmm. to work in development. But uh, I kind of miss the quality of animation that Disney would end up with, you know. No, oh, yeah, because sure. if if you know, there, there's there's different things that you know, like on early on and uh, you know, Lion King. There's things like where I'm, I'm, it was originally called Jungle King. Oh, okay. And that and, wouldn't have went over as well. Either. No, yeah, that would have worked better. Way well, better than Jungle King. Because Plus they had Jungle I'm, Book too. So. Yeah, I, I'm doing, I'm doing, you know, and they, they had just acquired like the Edgar Rice Burroughs stuff. And I really was like, oh, John Carter of Mars. And they're like, well, we got to do Tarzan first. So they, but they originally, when I was there, we were working on this thing called Lord Goofstoke, Goofy <laughs> of the Apes, and that would have been hilarious. They really, really should have done that short. You know, right. Goofy is Tarzan. <laughs> Just doing that parallel, that that would have been great. The more I think about it, the better it sounds. <laughs> so, oh yeah. <laughs> the... So that, that that's kind of what I was doing. Is like and it, like for instance, okay, so I'm on Jungle King, and scar is more of a lenny kind of character it hadn't really evolved into that uh what it ended up being which is more shakespeare you know richard mm. the third scar is richard the third that's a, that was a good that's that was a great idea but i'm doing stuff like i'm drawing i'm painting watercolors of savannas because i'm doing research yeah and uh, and it's like what do lions do well they do not live in the jungle there's no jungle they, they they don't live in the jungle. They're they're a plains creature. They live in savannas. Yep. And they and I'm drawing like this this big <laughs> rock. They have these things called kopjis, which are out in the middle. You'll be out there, and it'll be just like this plane going to the horizon with this gigantic rock with so big that trees and stuff are growing on it. Mm -hmm. And I draw that. And what the hell's that? And I'm like, well, that's pride rock. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> the rest yeah, is history like, yeah and it's like but that that that's kind of like how development goes it's like stuff gets slapped down and thrown away and then they pull it back out again you know mm. yeah i feel like we're really lacking that type of quality in in uh today's animation i think it, it's also i mean to me personally as, as a viewer i think it's also due to the fact of the uh the switch to only 3d animation as well i think it yeah. it just it, it can yeah push it's, you back from the artistry a bit and people are asking me it's like well it's like well, what, what you, what's wrong with 3d and it's like there's nothing wrong with 3d but um 2d animation is just people love it mm -hmm. why because it's living art it's mm -hmm. drawings come to life exactly you know th it's like snow white still looks good you know mm -hmm. Really? Doing an update of Snow White is one of the stupidest things you can do. Mm. You know, not to say, well, I guess they have done it, you know, <laughs> but 
but it's like they, they, it's 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 just the charm of the living drawings and stuff and you lose that with the 3d however saying that you look at stuff like the incredibles mm -hmm. um that really it looks drawn you know what i mean yes. mm -hmm. it 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 may be a 3d cg thing but it's the heart of it is still in the 2d world yep. you know the proportions of the characters and stuff what i really don't like nowadays is like that all the companies just mine the earlier cg shows uh movies mm. they mine those like i am really tired of every character every youthful character being dash with all of his <laughs> mannerisms yeah it's like, no that's dash you know where he screws his face up mm -hmm. and he's like yeah, what? they're really? lacking the originality that's the thing yeah no, and it's like, and it's just rehashing and redoing and redoing. And it's like, yeah, there's these different plots and stuff. and But who the hell cares? It's like, it's it's marketed instead of being marketed for the love and the joy of it. It's not, you know, and it's not marketed to kids. It's marketed mm -hmm. to kids who want to grow up to be lawyers or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we, did, we did have one question. I forgot to write down who it was from, unfortunately. Uh, but about since you come from obviously a storyboarding background and all this uh yeah. have you noticed in like recent times that with the way things are done now oh well, change it now do this make everything and it's get that's all slapdash have you noticed less storyboarding or like changes in the way that storyboarding is done or is it still pretty much oh, the same as what you've you've come um, i mean it's like back in the day kind of the reason why batman stood out was because everyone forgets how crappy most of the animation at the time was mm. you know there was some good stuff coming out like ducktales was very good mm. you know there, there was some good stuff coming out of uh you know like, i mean deke was the cutting edge believe it or not <laughs> you know it's like because we we're trying stuff and we're we're trying to make it look good it doesn't you know but uh, you know back then stuff was just as bad it's like it, it's a question of talent like when you do storyboards now um even though you're doing uh working in toon boom and you're basically constructing your own uh, animatic it's still drawing um mm -hmm. the people that i worked with back then and working in toon boom it's like it's like the same guys that i worked with on um say stripperella yeah they ended up working on batman they ended up working on spectacular spider-man with me they're working on they've worked on the scooby-doos they've worked mm -hmm. on you know and it's so it's the same skill set you know uh that was on batman still applies when i'm doing a toon boom you know yeah. show you're still drawing you you now can do foley and you can do different things and you can do your own editing which is kind of a ripoff but you actually hand in an animatic but it's still all the same skills so the people who are good or were good at just 2d excel in the newer stuff so when you see something bad and something you don't like it's not because of the technology it's because that's a hack doing yeah. a crappy job <laughs> and it's always been the the story you know there there's the good cartoons are good because you know i mean go back to the 60s you know johnny quest was as good as it was because alex toth and doug wildy gave it everything they they had you know mm -hmm. did not yeah. want to do a crappy job they did great character designs, intriguing character designs, and they worked around the limited animation because it's basically the same people who made the Flintstones, voices and everything, did Johnny Quest. Yeah. You know, and that's still, that still speaks today. Like, I mean, was the last, probably the last, uh, well, it wasn't the last one, but it was one of them that I worked on the Harley Quinn show. Um, oh, yes. This yes. came out. And we actually again, have a, I have a starred question for that later, I think. 
Yeah, it's like I, but again, I'm not taking a big credit for that because I was basically just doing, you know, fix it boards and uh, working in sequences and stuff. But that show works really well. And it's like, okay, the animation isn't Batman level or anything, but it's the same people I've worked with before, mm -hmm. you know, um, and they're all involved. It's like Jennifer Coyle, I met her doing Scooby Doo's, she's in charge of that show. Yeah. It's like same skill set. You're bringing you know, that mastery over yeah. to, to all the different yeah. other products that you're making. Why is the Harley Quinn show? It's like, yes, you know, the I, I don't know about the last season because I haven't seen that. But the previous seasons, it's like, number one, the scripts are funny. <laughs> and number two, um, even though the animation isn't great, you know, it's very limited. But they do the best thing with it. You, you board it well. Mm -hmm. And it's funny. You know, it just, it, yeah. the, the show is funny, you know. Yeah, storyboarding is uh, is, is very interesting to me because um, as someone who grew up in the early 2000s, I used to watch a lot of uh, Jenna D. Tartakovsky, and I saw that his, mm -hmm. you know, processes was basically just crafting the uh, the story through storyboards exclusively almost. And yeah. That always fascinated me, and I just think that storyboard is such a is such a great thing, and I think it's kind of maybe becoming a lost art to the younger generation in terms of animation because now you can do it well, digitally. One thing that's um, one thing that's changed, I think, you know, and I've worked with it, but it again, it's the same thing. Like when Bat, for instance, here this isn't this isn't backtracking or anything. On Batman the Animated Series, we're talking like 19, was it 91, 90, that I got involved with it, right? We uh, had a big problem because I hired um, Dan Reba and Brad Rader from, you know, the last time I was working with them was at Deke. Um, and they're on my crew, you know, and we had Mike Gogan came in and it's like, so these guys could really draw. Mm. And we're doing it. Then it gets to layout. And you have a crew of very experienced layout people who can't draw superhero figures to save their life. Mm. They're used to Smurfs. They're <laughs> used to, like, at the very cutting edge was Super Friends. Yeah. So... That that was kind of typical of the industry, and it's kind of typical now. It's like so. Actually, it took like a whole year before you got layout. That for the first few episodes, um, because we we're doing layouts in the house, I was taking layouts and going. Uh, I'm just redrawing them. Yeah, you know, and I would give them to Brad, and I'd give them to Dan, and give them. You know, it's like we're we're redrawing from the people who are supposed to be doing the layouts. We yeah. ended up with a, a good crew, you know, through the mm -hmm. process. Some people actually learned and other people, you know, showed, you know, we ended up hiring people who really could do the, you know, superhero style and yeah. trying to match, you know, the designs that Bruce was doing. Because mm -hmm. we had people yeah. who were like, I'm correcting this Batman face, you know, <laughs> correcting that still goes face. on. Oh, yeah, you know, because Bruce does like, you know, it's like that graphic kind of you know mm -hmm. it's like there's ways nice you gotta square. throw the shadow on it and stuff like that yeah. and there were people who just well i'm gonna i thought more detail would be better here and it's like no i don't it's not. i don't i don't think any show has gotten darkness and shadows better like it, whether it be live action or cartoon or any yeah. uh, anything in between nothing has gotten shadows uh down as well as the oh, animated just just people like I'm doing. I'm I'm doing the storyboard, and I get the the layout back uh, interior of the Batcave. It's like stop drawing a goddamn outline on on Alfred's tuxedo. <laughs> it's just <laughs> black. Yeah. You know, well, you know it'll be able to see it. That just give me, give me that. Just get, get, get. It, oh, um, it, you know, and then <laughs> and then because everyone will tell you. It's not going to work. He's he's going to disappear once the backgrounds are too dark and we're not going to be able to see him. It's yes, like, yes, that's the point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you do see him. You see his hands. You see his cuffs. You see his, you know, you see his the, the white shirt. You, you see his head. It's cool. You know, the brain fills it in. It's like that's the magic of a 2D animation. 
And that's another thing that we used to do was we didn't really go to school for it. I I went to the Kubert School in New Jersey and one year in the Arts um, Art Institute of Boston, you know, to to learn, you know, to try and learn, but no one was teaching animation. Mm -hmm. And I could not afford to go to Cal Arts or to oh. Art Center. I was poor, you know. It's like I, I couldn't go to any of those schools. Now, just because you go to Cal Arts doesn't mean you can draw. Oh yes, and That's there's a, yeah. a lot of that going on right now. Yeah, they even dubbed it the uh, the Cal Arts style. Basically, that's mm -hmm. what's um, invading uh, children's animation nowadays, especially um, Disney stuff. That's yeah. basically it. You have the yeah. same design for almost every single cartoon. This this was happening when I was yeah. growing up. I used to, I saw it firsthand. You know, as a kid, we had a name for it back in um, when we were in animation. Right? It's like there's there is. Uh, action adventure style that we're doing on batman mm. and then there's idiot style <laughs> idiot because <style. laughs> any idiot can draw this <laughs> oh yeah i i can agree because i've tried to draw some cartoons that i watched growing up and yeah it's probably idiot style because i can draw for sure i mean i move maybe with a bit of practice yes but mm. ooh. I've, I've i've given up on ever being an artist so <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's like uh, there's nothing to say it's like for instance one of the best idiot style shows ever was the simpsons Oh yeah, okay, yeah. especially if you ch if you check it out on it's like so there's and Mike Judge is another one too. Mm. Like uh he started out his student film was Frog Baseball, which I won't get into. But it's like the most crude, weirdly drawn characters you've ever seen and man, <laughs> you just laugh your ass off watching. Yeah, it. it works sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's like so there's not saying that it isn't to be done, but don't go and pound your chest and say look what I've done. You know, and like be so proud that you can draw mamby pamby little pud head <laughs> with his giant feet. You know, it's like that doesn't. That, that, that's also like that's invading like the comic industry too, where there's a lot, a, a lot less uh, technique and detail to the art, and it's becoming more like. I had. I don't even jobs. know what the term I would use for it is. Well, it's like uh, I'm. I'm really sick and tired of people who can't draw backgrounds. Hmm. You know, actually, yeah, that, just, that's like that. That's pervasive in a lot of stuff. There was uh, a, that, yeah, that was that was a, a, a little comment earlier about the backgrounds of BTS. If they were painted on black, um, they were. Um, it's that's very true. It's the especially the stuff that Eric was um, shipping out from the studio. Um, like if you if you look at like uh, the early episodes like POV from Spectrum mm -hmm. and on mm -hmm. Leather Wings, those backgrounds on those episodes definitely painted on like black construction paper. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, now imagine TMS, somebody who can't do them on. Imagine someone who can't do backgrounds trying to do it on black. Yeah. <laughs> but most of the studios, what they did was uh, like especially TMS, for instance. TMS absolutely refused to work on black paper but they took the color keys that eric prepared and they matched the style doing it their way okay. um so if you look at their episodes they have a certain richness to the backgrounds like where the sky is like say if you look at the uh, feet of clay part two it's the like skies have that rich red color to it which you couldn't get if you painted on a black construction paper. Yeah. But you know, they, so the, they just matched the style and they made, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, it's like, but the art directing wise, it was sent out. This is what we want. And if the studios matched it, you know, however they got to that point. Yeah. It worked. Know, yeah. It worked. It's All like, right. it, it's just, it's, it's basically a look that they were going for. Yeah. No. And Eric and Eric got it, you know, by working on black construction paper. Mm. Mm. The, well, Dark Hour, I guess you've got the uh, that, oh. uh, the yeah, animated. So, so yeah, since we've obviously transitioned into it, the, the first thing that I, I was curious about was in the earliest uh, days of the show when it was being planned. So in the 60s, you know, and, and 70s, 
Batman went through that like period where he was lighthearted. They did a lot of weird stuff. And then the eighties brought back the grittier, darker Batman with like Dark yeah. Knight Returns. Uh, what were the discussions like in the early days of the cartoon of which, which way you were going to go with it? Um, oh, based um, on the fact that it had gone through both of those periods. Well, I mean, it, they had done that, uh, that teaser trailer, both uh, Eric and Bruce had done that one with a Canadian studio. Um, so that look was what we were going for, you know. But it's basically what we were doing is Fleischer Supermans, you know, that if you're familiar with that. We're, we're, uh, we're, we're going, bit, yeah. yeah, no, it's like, but that, that, that is like the Fleischer Supermans, um, really informs a lot of the animation industry um miyazaki heavily heavily influenced by you know not by disney but by fleischer the fleischer yeah. brothers and the, the fleischer supermans were something that dan reba me brad you know Picture we, we all we all studied it we studied the hell out of it and all the fleischer brothers tricks that were on the old popeyes mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> that's kind of what we were going for with Batman. Mm. And we knew, you know, it's like we knew we weren't going to get that level of animation, but sometimes you kind of do, you know. Yeah, but we're, I think we're using well. Yeah, we're using like we're basically using 30s and 40s animation techniques. Mm. Yeah, cuz uh, the Fleischer Superman, I'm I've seen a few uh, right, there's I've, a, I've a, a, a few episodes. Episode. Yeah. Oh yeah. The the animation style is great for the '40s. It is fantastic. Still holds up today. Yeah, no, that's it's 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 superior to anything you know that anyone's putting out, in my opinion. You know, but then again, I mean, I'm looking back on class that that's that's utterly classic animation. Mm -hmm. It was you know it was it, it just doesn't get better. You know, really doesn't. And uh, mm -hmm. that that's really what we were doing. This was our chance to try and do like a Fleischer style cartoon and uh, we succeeded. And then sometimes you don't, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, I think with uh, uh, Batman, it was more successes than, than failures for sure. It's, oh yeah. It's, yeah. No, no. Far it's like, more, va vastly more. <laughs> yeah. No. And there, there are episodes where they really nail it, you know, you know, like, like on leather wings and POV, kind mm -hmm. of have that Fleischer look to them. Like Spectrum, that animation studio was really going for it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then you get, like, even the later seasons, it's like there's uh, episodes like Harley's Holiday, you mm -hmm. know, which I, mm -hmm. which really kind of touches on that level, you know, I, I, I think. It's like th there are some, and, and uh, some of the stuff in Deep Freeze really, you know, obviously yeah, I have the Freeze robots in there. <laughs> and it's just and yes it's because i've always wanted to do mechanical monsters <laughs> people say that's eh, just like mechanical monsters it's like yeah yes yeah mm -hmm. that's that's what i'm doing <laughs> well it's my take I... on mechanical monsters it's like i wanted to, i love i'm sorry but unapologetic <laughs> it's not a well, ripoff it's homage since we're on the uh, the episodes, you've directed about twenty two episodes of the show, and you've worked on various other episodes in you know the art and storyboarding department. If you had to choose one that was your personal favorite, which one would it be, and why? Oh, can't do it. <laughs> it's 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 just a multiple choice. I mean, showdown. You know, Jonah mm. Hex. I got to do the ironclad airship with the gun deck you oh, know yeah. i took that whole chunk myself it's like sorry you guys i am drawing the cannonballs <laughs> you know <laughs> animating cannonballs it's like it doesn't get better than that mm. and uh oh my god oh no let me turn that, <laughs> turn that <laughs> crap off that's always I, about that. that's always my fear that like something's gonna go off in the background and I have no control over it when I'm doing something like yeah. that. <laughs> so anyway, shut that thing up. So where was I? Oh, and then there's so it's like so showdown. I mean, you know, Harley's holiday though. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Just yeah, okay. the level sure of animation that. that that studio put into the hyenas is wonderful. Mm. 
you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, it's like, and I got to do, <laughs> and, and Paul Dini actually would come into my office and pitch me ideas, you know, cause we're, you know, good friends. Yeah. And he would, and he'd go and say, yeah. And Harley, he's like, and Harley goes, you know, gets out of uh, Arkham and Veronica Vreeland's shopping with Bruce Wayne and she ends up getting kidnapped and blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah. And Veronica Vreeland's dad is George Patton. And he's got a tank. <laughs> I got there's to do. I got small, to do. It's like small, I got, but there's the hyenas right there. Yeah, I got to do them, and it's like, and, and again, probably some of the most beautiful animation, some of the best animation, mm. is just um, the sequence I did where um, Veronica Vreeland and uh, Harley are bonding in the car. Yeah, and you know, and Harley actually gained sympathy and just the animation that they put that they chose to do just the girls in the car is wonderful. You know, mm. like the, the look of the, they, they got it, you know, so well, I can't, that's another one. Like, I love that. I love yeah, that. So, sometimes so, the, the simplest of scenes have the most yeah. memorable aspects. It's and then incredible. deep freeze, you know, I love that one too. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, a question in the chat of how much did you assist in the Harley Quinn design? Oh, that that's a Bruce Tim design. No. Mm. Although I gave her the pigtails. Oh, the <laughs> nice. pigtails. Because in Harley Quinnade, um, it starts out with uh, Harley in her cell, and Batman comes in. Mm -hmm. And Mike Gogan was uh, storyboarding that sequence, and Mike is an excellent character designer. And uh, Mike comes up to me, and he's like, "Yeah, this is kind of off, huh?" And I'm like, "No, it's a good board, but..." Yeah, it doesn't look like Harley, you know, because it's like he just had her hair down. Yeah. You know, kind of, you know, it's like, kind of like how, you know, Bruce did it and met the comic book Mad Love, you know, it's like we're just her hair's down, you know, mm -hmm. when she's a doctor or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, it doesn't look like Harley, does it? No. And it's like, so then I go, hey, give her the two of the pebbles pigtails. <laughs> it's like, what pigtails down? No, no, up on top of her head, you know. So that's <laughs> now she looks like Harley, and it's like, hey, yeah, suddenly she looks like Harley. Okay, it works, yeah, yeah. No, and that wow. that that episode, it's like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, uh, but yeah, it's just purely Bruce. Bruce did all the character designs, you know, the mm, main ones, great. the main ones, great character designs. Yeah, we uh, we did have a question from uh, Luke Longley, he's uh, uh, also known as the Northern English Bastard on YouTube. He uh, asked, <laughs> um, uh, was it difficult to convince older veteran actors to star in the animated series, such as John Vernon? Like, was Hell there no. any kind? It was nope. not? Nothing. Nope. Hmm. No, that was what was weird. Um, the only time that I remember, um, Andrea Romano, she had the hookup. I, I mean, she knew the agents and she knew who to talk to. And she knew who was living in town which was a big deal. Like the original, the original Joker was mm -hmm. Tim Curry. Mm -hmm. Yes. But yeah. he ended up not being on the show because of something that was taking him out of town. I think he had to go on Broadway or something. You know, I wouldn't be shocked by that. He, uh, yeah. He's... No, I think he was doing Annie at the time, you know, Oh, I think. Um, anyway, so stuff like that would happen, but, um, she would come in and ask, so who do you think, well, you know, if you were going to cast this role, who would you pick? You know, and it's like when it, for instance, it came to uh, uh, Rachel Ghoul, and she would go and say, who would you see? It's like, God, it'd be, be great. Well, it's like a, a British actor, you know, some someone like, you know, Omar Sharif or someone like that, you know, or, or maybe, you know, Brian Blessed, you know. Yeah. Or Patrick Stewart. And she said, I could call him Patrick Stewart. <laughs> there you Patrick, go. Yeah, but it's like, but, and, but, you know, but Patrick Stewart turned it down oh. beneath him. Oh. You know? Which Who was, ended up uh, playing Ray Shuggle? David Warner. David Warner, okay. So, and, yeah, she I, went, and then she would go and say, okay, can't get, it's like, what do you think of David Warner? And I'm like, David Warner? We can get him? And they're in there. She's like, yeah, he lives in town. Mm. Yeah. 
and I see like <laughs> Professor R2 says Michael Ansara is Mr. Freeze. Yeah. That was right. it's like I think that it's like Andre would call up these guys, like John Vernon, just he's on board. You know, most of the actors, Bob Hastings. My God, what a great guy. Mm -hmm. Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. You know, it was yeah. like the older, the older actors that, you know, I kind of grew up with them, you know, knowing their face and, and seeing them, you know, doing television while I was growing up. It was like, uh, they were like my dad, you know, mm -hmm. and I could, and, and they were such, they're such wonderful guys and they love doing voice acting. It's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh the fact that Mr. Freeze was brought up is actually a, a, a one of the points that I wanted to bring up. So historically, uh, DC is known for keeping Batman very close to the vest and not wanting to yep. deviate a lot. But there were some liberties taken with the show in terms of certain villains, Mr. Freeze being one of them, a few others. Yep. Uh, was there ever any kind of like pushback on that? How did it feel being given those kind of uh, liberties from a company like that? Well, there was always pushback. But they're they were pretty happy. Um, DC, from what I could tell, um, because it's like I, I wasn't I would be involved episode to episode, you know, and there would be mm -hmm. things that would be said, but it was mostly broadcast standards as the people he had to deal with in the network. Um, but yeah, DC was like they were on board. They were on board, you know. It's like they just saw this as being another branch hmm. you know of you know because they started they 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 had detective comics and batman you know and yeah. all all those you know they had that that whole lineup but then when the show started they started their own uh comic series you know batman adventures based on the show and the only canon in the batman the was the, from the animated series you know, mm. which yeah. doesn't really relate to the Batman comics that were being done at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, this was its own world with its own villains, and then each of the villains has their own backstory that was created for the series. So, that I think that it seemed to me at the time all I could get from DC was that they really enjoyed it. Yeah, their seal of approval, and they just yeah. let you have basically free reign because hey, they, they saw that it was it was going good, I guess. Yeah, well, it's like they 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 were fans of it. Like I went to uh, I'm, I'm I went back east, uh, you know, like to visit friends in New Jersey. I met up with uh, my friend Jan and Tom. They were going to visit uh, DC, so I flew in, you know, and I, I was like at, uh, I met them in New York city and was going to go and hang out in Jersey with them. But, you know, so we go to the DC offices and, uh, I knew Denny O'Neill. He had been showing the episodes of the Batman of the show before it went on the air. He was showing them hmm. at conventions. Oh, and nice. I, <laughs> so I kind of knew Denny O'Neill. So I go and I ask, I go and ask them. It's like, uh, so it was, uh, Denny O'Neill here, and they said, "Oh yeah, he's in. He's, he's he's over there. It's like yeah, you go down the hallway there, and it's like go to Archie's office. Archie's office. Yeah. So I go down there, and it's Archie Goodwin. You know, <laughs> just like one of the greatest writers ever and the greatest editors ever. And he was there with Denny, and they were talking about another book. And it's like Denny says, "Hey, Kevin, how's it going?" I'm like. Uh, you know i don't even know what to say it's like oh my god it's like archie goodwin it's like i'm so glad to meet you and he says what are you talking about man we're fans of yours <laughs> that's gotta be like like a mind fuck when, oh, when you're a huge fan of someone they're a huge fan back to you it's great that's yeah great. no it's like the, i think the dc like mike carlin uh was another i think they were just fans of the show I, I actually did covers for their Superman Batman magazine, which this is before the Superman cartoon came out, but it was mm -hmm. done in that animated, it was in the animated world style. Mm -hmm. So I would do the covers for them. And uh, the only, every time there's a Batman cover, pretty much the first sketch or the second sketch, you know, Mike Carlin would approve it. And the only thing he'd ever say to me when I would draw Superman was make his hair longer and bigger ass <laughs> on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but we you sort of touched on this but there was uh was there any ever any uh, was there ever a time when there was any kind of studio interference where like something was overruled uh a direction you were going or a uh, character design where they were just like no can't do it uh that comes from uh one of our mods hostman socrates um yeah it happens all the time most well, there's like one that specifically you you remember vividly here oh god <laughs> that's like that's a tough one because <laughs> it's like there's a, there's always those things like there was one there was one episode uh say okay pov all right now pov was where we're dancing around the fact that there are guns the bad guys could have tommy guns mm -hmm. but you can't have bullets hitting people you know there has to be that threat and so there's all, all that that problem with guns and stuff. And then there was this character, Driller, who was uh, voiced by um, Ron Perlman, who later mm. on was, you know, Matt Hagen and Clayface. Yes. But he was doing great voice. So we designed this character based on Rondo Hatton, you know. <clears throat> and uh, so Driller is drilling the safe. You know, and he's, you know, that's his thing. He's driller. He's mm -hmm. got the drill. So we storyboarded this whole sequence when Montoya, Renee Montoya shows up. And she's like, gets trying to rescue Batman. Driller comes up to her. He's chasing her with the drill. Mm -hmm. She's dodging out of the way and he's jamming the drill into the wall. He's jamming the drill here. He's jamming the drill here. And we get the broadcast standards back. Like, are you insane? <laughs> <laughs> you can't have a guy named Driller with a drill chasing a woman around. And we're like, <laughs> of course we can. Oh my God. What was I thinking? Whoops. It was a great <laughs> sequence, though. That was a lot of work. I think Dan Reba drew most of it, but. Weird. Oh man! So, so Driller had to drop the friggin' drill. Oh God! <laughs> yeah. So that that it was a it was it. Maybe today it would have gone, but you know, mm. yeah, there was there was stuff like that that had to be cut. I mean, that, oh. that that's just one example. There there there's stuff that happens like that all the time. Oh you yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know how to top that. To be honest with you, I think um. <laughs> I know that that uh, if if you have to go at any point, uh, I know we originally said an hour. If you have to go, I do have a few video questions I'd like to get to, and then no, go ahead. Um, if we could just talk about like Mask of Phantasm, and then however much longer you want to hang out, we have some extra stuff at the end. But uh, okay. I do have a couple of video questions. Uh, the first first one comes from uh, my buddy Stupenzo. He's been on the channel a few times. He, uh, yes, well, he has a, a question about some uh, some rogues since we have it up. Yeah, Altieri. Fellow Italian here, Stupenzo. I have a question for you. The question is, who is your favorite rogue from Batman and why? And uh, if it's the Joker, who's your second favorite Batman villain? <laughs> um, I, I always come back to, it's like, to be, to be completely honest, it's like I love all of the characters, even the ones that I didn't get to work with. But um, really, it's Harley. Hmm. I just, I just love Harley. Um, she's such an interesting character, and it's like, and, the, and just I love the, the uh, story arc where she, Harlequinade, she actually breaks with the Joker, <laughs> and then in Harley's Holiday where she's on her own. Yeah, you know, it's like it would probably be Harley, but of course then there's then there's Mister Freeze. Oh, Poison yeah. Ivy's great too, and then, and then there's Catwoman. I, I I would have to say, and I know the question wasn't directed at me, but the Mister Freeze, Mister uh, Freeze re yeah. redesign is one of the coolest things I've I've ever seen. I remember being a kid and just being enamored with the uh, the concepts that they were doing that you guys were doing with that. And no, no, uh, they're complex. You know, they're complex characters. Harley yeah. Freeze, and this it's just they're complex characters that even though they're not the uh the very very primary ones they're still incredibly known by everyone just because of their complexity it just that's what made them big yeah. well also um 
when I and also another a big big part of why I, I say Harley is because of Arlene Sorkin, mm. and I'm sorry for everyone out there that you didn't get to see her perform, and I did. You know, yeah, I got Actually, to see her perform. Say we're sweethearts again. I got to see her go and say, laugh this off, button. <laughs> I actually a... had, um, we had a super chat about Arlene Sorkin. So I'll, I will bring that up since you mentioned. Following the death of Arlene Sorkin, I reviewed Harlequinade. Who would have thought that Stoic Conroy and Goofy Sorkin could end up being such com being such comedy gold? Well, that's why they're comedy gold. And, uh, oh, it's like, <laughs> that was like... I was cracking up and it's like, you're supposed to be when we're, we're not in the booth and all the actors. And that's another thing that um, they would do on Batman um, is that uh, Andrea would have all of the actors in the booth together, mm -hmm. acting together. So there's Mark Hamill standing up with Arlene next to him and they're they're acting together you know <laughs> that's part of the reason why the stuff is so good and, yeah it, it feels uh, way more authentic because a lot of times with with uh voice acting you kind of get that disjointed feel where you could tell they they did it at separate times yeah. maybe even mm -hmm. different locations not even you know in the same uh sound studio or anything like that but with with, yeah. with Batman the with DC animated in general, but especially with Batman the animated series. Oh, you oh it always felt authentic. It always so that that actually makes a lot of sense that they were in the same and, room together. And another thing too about like you say you know Kevin Conroy and you you hear his voice and you know, but what people don't really know is like the guy had stage acting ability, and mm. he could do stand up. So he he's, talk about comedy gold. It's like you know like. We said, I want to listen to the radio. Don't. <laughs> you know, it's like, just the way it's like, first take. Don't. <laughs> it's like, you don't do anything. You don't touch anything unless I tell you to. Got it? <laughs> it's like yeah, no it's... one had to tell Kevin Conroy that that was going to be funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, delivery. Speaking of Kevin Conroy, I did have a question from uh, our buddy, Blue Collar Loser, Chris. Uh, he wanted to know if you were asked to come back to do a Batman the Animated Series follow-up, kind of in the vein of what they're doing with like X-Men 97 now, uh, would you do it if you were, uh, would you do it even though you had to use different voice actors for certain characters? Oh, sure. Of course. Yeah, of course. It's like, you know, it's like, what do you, you know, it's like. What are you going to do, right? It's, yeah. It's yeah. unfortunate. Yeah, but, but... Well, if you look at like, say, like after Batman, but if, if you look at like Stripperello. Mm -hmm. um couldn't ask for a better cast you know it's like you got rob paulson you got yeah. uh you know maurice lamarche pam anderson she's a great it's like she has great comedy timing you know and a, yeah. and a sweet voice <laughs> oh don't show that stupid <laughs> one. that's the redesign of stripperella when you can see her eyeballs i didn't oh was it was originally just the white uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's why mm. the second season failed miserably is because <laughs> they changed the character designs and they changed you know gave it to a bunch of hacks who just crapped out a bunch of storyboards and didn't know what they're doing <laughs> I, i'm not i don't really remember much about stripper i was a big fan of pam anderson because i was like 15 years old but not because of oh. the cartoon so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but it was like that 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 voice cast was i mean we got gold tom kenny it's like in Jill Talley, if you got, you got like Maurice LaMarche, Tom Kenny, Jill Talley in a room, you're covered. You can do mm. all the voices. It's like those, they're, they're so good. So it's like, if you're doing another Batman, hell, you know, it's like the, the people who can do comedy, they're, you know, they, they can do, they can do, you know, dramatic acting too. Yeah. You know, um, they're just, it's, it's absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Pam Anderson yeah. is underrated for comedic chops. I actually had one meeting with the executives um, when I was starting, including Stan Lee, where I'm starting with saying, we're going to have to have a table read. Um, what do you mean a table read? Well, you know, it's like, we got Pam Anderson, you know, she can't act. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Number one, I'm in charge of the show, right? Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Pam Anderson has got comedy chops and number that's number one. What do you mean? What it's like tool time. Yeah, she yeah, was, have she you was ever on seen... a comedy show for several seasons. Yeah. Like, yeah, how it's you... like I mean, come on. It's like it's like, it's like there's a reason why. It's like, yeah, no, she she's good at stand-up and stuff. And number two, she's the boss. So let's not try mm-hmm. and piss her off. <laughs> <laughs> and she's great you know you put her in the room and it's like with more just and i just said it's like and she's going to be surrounded by like we've got like the best people the best voice actors out there you know yeah it's like tom kenny can do anything it's like yes he was spongebob and this was all done at nickelodeon <laughs> which is how mm-hmm. they you know hired him it's like oh yeah well, it's just like hiring a guy that's local yeah. And it's like, yeah, he does SpongeBob, but he can do anything. The guy has, mm-hmm. you know, abilities to do. Yeah. Yeah. And and yeah. he can do dramatic acting and he can and he has great co- comedic timing. Mm-hmm. And you know, and when it comes yeah. to when it comes to vo- voice acting is probably the hardest type of acting there is because you're you have to visualize everything. It's mo- for the most part you don't have anything to work off of unless you're in the room with somebody. So it's it's people who can do voice acting are are probably the best actors on the planet in my opinion. Yeah, they are. And um, and speaking of Italians, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say that um, I I am a very a Harley Quinn absolute Harley Quinn purist. You know, I mean, so mm-hmm. you know, in, in, in saying that, I do enjoy the Harley Quinn show. <laughs> you know, the, the rated R comedy show. But I am looking forward to uh, Lady Gaga's interpretation of Harley. Oh yeah, and that, Joker that's, too. Yeah, that's yeah. been very dis- divisive. A lot of some people, yeah, well, are, people are, are interested, other people are not. Yeah. So, so okay, I'm closer to it. Like I knew Arlene. All right, okay. So <laughs> everyone just, you know, when I say that I I think I'm very interested in seeing Lady Gaga's take. Let's remember, like she's a New Yorker. <laughs> you know, she's a nice Italian girl. You know, oh, it's yeah. like I, I think what was her dad's restaurants in Queens, you know, so mm. I think she can handle the accent. We have a, a question in the off. chat from one of my one of our mods about how it feels. What I'll just read it verbatim. How does it feel when studios are picking up big name celebs for voice parts instead of accomplished voice actors? Well, what, what is I guess? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, what is your opinion? No, on because it? it's like, say I'm Batman. It's like. We're picking up a big name like Michael York, you know. We got Michael mm-hmm. York. It's like it depends on the actor. It depends on the actor. Um, like in um Mask of the Phantasm, for instance, you know, Hart Bachner wasn't really he's not a voice guy, but my god, he's good, mm-hmm. you know. So it depends. It depends on the uh, the the actor, you know. Um, some some actors are just good you know and yeah so it's it's if, if if the voice fits you know it'll work yeah that's been my works. experience you can uh, a, a big name actor who uh well you know it's like uh, adrian barbeau for instance right mm-hmm. um she wasn't really known as a voice actor before she was doing catwoman um but i remember her showing up she showed up in her sweats, no makeup on. <laughs> Same with Pam Anderson. The first time uh, Pam came into work, it's like no makeup, uh, just, you know, she performed barefoot, you know. <laughs> it's like, it's just like, I mean, relax. I guess it really it's doesn't like, matter. It, yeah, the it's like, no, no, it's like, however, it's like, and, and, and there's like, while in Adrian Barbeau, it's like she's in her sweats. Uh, didn't have to get dressed up for the job, you know, love yeah. it, you know, just, uh, I think that's, that's part of it right there. It's like that they act, that they don't have to be on, Oh, you know? So, I mean, speaking of, uh, Catwoman and the, the rogues gallery, do, there is a question from, uh, Michael Borgay, Borgay Borgine. and Borgine, Borgine, sorry. And, um, so the question is, do you have a villain that you wanted to utilize in the animated series more, but you couldn't? And, uh, what was your favorite character oh. to direct? I guess you already said it was, uh, Harley. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would have loved to have done more Poison Ivy, hmm. you know? 
Yeah, and a lot of that's mainly Diane Pershing is just such a lovely person, and uh, just you just like hearing her voice, you know. <laughs> um, and yeah, no, I would have loved to have done more Poison Ivies. I would have loved to have done more uh, Mister Freeze. Um, oh yeah, you know they weren't in that many episodes. That's that's the annoying part is that they're, no, they're very well, very a, low. There's a lot of villains that uh, in the Rogues Gallery they were trying to cycle through. So yeah. It's like it's like, and I never got to do the Riddler. I never got to do the Mad Hatter. I only got to do uh, one episode of Penguin. I'd love to have done more Penguins. Paul yeah. Williams is great as Penguin. Mm -hmm. he, I mean, he made he made uh, you know. It's like he, he made Danny DeVito look stupid in comparison. <laughs> I think you guys really struck gold with all the casting, with the yeah. voice casting, because it's basically Don't worry. perfect. Devito, Devito wasn't stupid. It was like he was just in a Tim Burton movie. <laughs> but just Paul Williams is like he he nailed that. I would have loved to have done more penguins. Hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh... I guess uh, I've got another question for you. It's um, This is for Mask of the Phantasm. Since today's uh, 2023, it's the 30th anniversary of Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah. And uh, so could you tell us maybe how it was transitioning from a, a show like Batman, the animated series, but to the big screen and the unique pressures that you guys may have felt in, uh, you know, trying to attempt it? It wasn't uh, no different. It was done on the same schedule done in the same manner the only difference was um we got to go a little more extreme mm, you know yeah the gun now we could actually have pistols you know and actually you know have actual jeopardy batman could bleed and i got to knock the joker's tooth out of his head <laughs> that that is like burned into my memory because i remember going to see this movie as a kid and i remember the tooth being gone it was yeah you know, it's like in Batman getting the crap cut out of him by uh, auto gyros. It's mm -hmm. it, it was oh, yeah. it really, but it was done on the same schedule, and it was basically a way to keep the crew going. Yeah. Um, originally, it was boarded pretty much for television because it was going to be direct video, which was pretty much a square. Yeah. But uh, when they decided to do it as uh, theatrical, there was. Not a whole lot of adjusting after that, but there was, you know, just adding things to the size and changing some of the compositions. Mm. But I mean, it was especially from people of your caliber, you know, of course, at that point, it, this would have been very, very easy to do after uh, the animated series. Oh, yeah, that's, it was it was just part of the same schedule. Mm. It wasn't oh. wasn't really any different, but what we could do in the sequences. Now that was to, different. Got to be yeah. inventive with that. Hmm. And uh, yeah, and the baloney was my idea. The Joker with the baloney. <laughs> I gotta go back and rewatch it. Like right after we're done here, I'm going back and rewatching it. I have the, D the DVD set right behind me over here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like there's uh, there's just and there's there's touches in it um, acting wise where they I don't know just seems like again I'll I'll, I'll pick on Hart Bachner again. Just that the Joker Venom getting him in the hospital sequence it's like that was a little more extreme than the television show would have allowed yeah mm -hmm. you know you, you're given a few more liberties in the yeah. uh in the way of doing things is, and is, is and, really awesome. and real actual death oh yeah actual you know? consequences that's yeah. the thing yeah no, so everyone forgets andrea beaumont is a murderer mm -hmm. that's the difference between her and batman she's a mm -hmm. murderer yeah. She's out for revenge, you know, and that's something we couldn't do. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. So, so. Yeah, we have a couple more video questions, and then I, I think we'll uh, we've we've held you for almost an hour. We had a. I want to say I got some other stuff, but I, I do want to get to these video questions because uh, they're they're from uh, some of my uh, okay oldest fans. So we're gonna do. I'll do both. Uh, there's three questions from two videos. I'll do them both in a row because they're pseudo related, but we're going to do both. The series, what approaches did you take with Batman that would have been different to other works in your career, considering how successful the Batman series was? Thank you. That, that one was from Richard Barbie. And this one is from uh, channel regular in the chat, RRTNZ. Russ, oh, this is a bit weird, isn't it? All right, all right, enough of that. Okay. 
So when Batman the Animated Series came out, I was in my early 20s. And as a, as a huge fan of Batman, I watched it religiously. Now, since then, many people have, have, have said it's not just the definitive animated adaptation of Batman, but the definitive anime adaptation of Batman. You were involved with the series right at the very beginning. So I have two quick questions for you. And my questions are, one, did you know when you were directing those first few episodes that what you were doing was going to be something that lasts past, you know, past the current generation? I mean, I've got it on the screen behind me and it's on Netflix 30 years after it came out. Yeah. So did you know that you were making something special? No. Nope. Two... What was your process in adapting <laughs> Batman for the screen? Um, clearly, whatever you did was very successful. So could you tell us a bit about it? All right. Thanks very much. And uh, thanks for asking for having me question on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I th it's like, what was the first question? Uh, so the first nope. question, okay, one of us has to hit the button. Sorry. Um, <laughs> the first question was similar to the last question. It was, okay. what was your process of, oh, uh, that, well, that would have well. been different from other work that you had done? Uh, um, it really wasn't, the process wasn't really, it was kind of, a me, Dan, Brad, you know, um, for my crew, um, we were doing what we had been doing, working with Japanese studios. Here we are again, working with Japanese studios, but feeling like we could actually take it to the next level, that next step. So the process was pretty much the same as doing ALF and ALF Tales. Mm -hmm. It's just a better schedule and, you know, with the character designs that we loved, you know, because Bruce's, those, those first, especially those first character designs, they were a pleasure to draw, you know. Um, yeah. So the process was pretty much the same as just making a regular Saturday morning cartoon. But we are we had more um ability to in to really try and experiment with fleischer studio techniques and things mm -hmm. you know we could uh, I, I had more confidence with uh moving with animating backgrounds and stuff we knew that they it's going to artists who will be able to get what we're trying to do you know so that mm -hmm. that was kind of that part of the process yeah. um and did i know <laughs> um, I, I, I thought the cartoon was coming out well, um, but I really, you know, I, I, I didn't know it was going to be as successful as it turned out to be. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that until I saw it live. I saw a, a screening, Denny O'Neill actually at, at a WonderCon where Denny O'Neill, I met him and he was saying, Hey, we're going to screen your episode you know, Mask of the, uh, not Mask of the Phantasm, uh, On Leather Wings. So you should stop by. Okay. It's like you told me where, and I, I walk in um, late. They had already started the cartoon, but I, so I just sat down with the audience and the audience reaction totally caught me flat-footed, you know, mm. just it's especially, great. especially yeah. when like uh, there's that scene where, uh, yeah, it was Kevin Conroy's voice. <laughs> <laughs> where he's like the dirigible pilot and he's going You're right below us Whew. you know and he goes past and then batman's face goes bam and hits the window <laughs> the audience jumped everyone jumped and I was the like, sound oh. the sound mixing for the show was oh. so much better than every other cartoon at the time yeah and, oh yeah uh, uh, just since you mentioned Kevin Conroy, Waylon, Waylon Basifus in the chat for $1.99 is Kevin Conroy the best batman i don't think there's any question no, no. The, the, and, the, and the thing is, is like another thing that people don't understand is, and here I'm gonna, I'm not going to slam the directors of all the Batman movies and stuff, mm -hmm. but George Clooney, you know, Michael Val Keaton, Kilmer, Val Kilmer, they're they're all good actors, you know, they're all good actors, but first time I meet Kevin Conroy, you walk in. You're looking up at him. I'm six feet tall. I'm mm -hmm. looking up at this guy. Broad shoulders, <laughs> lantern jaw, handsome. It's like, why isn't he bad <laughs> in the movies? <laughs> Physically, yeah. he, he would have been the best one, too. 
you know he, mm-hmm. he was physically he was he was there oh, um, yeah we and... do have one additional uh uh super chat here from blue collar loser for five dollars thoughts on never getting a batman beyond live action movie conroy was perfect as an older bruce never got made bruce it never got made bruce old and pathetic a great show I yeah. the, the wording at the end was a little weird, but I I I I I think what he's basically just saying there is, you know, as he they didn't do that, they didn't go that route of making no. old and pathetic. He was still he just didn't have the physical tools anymore, but he had the mind and all that, which was great. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's like I had nothing to do with Batman Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. nothing. Have you IMDb? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, have nothing well, to do with it. Maybe we should just do a, a quick rapid fire round of the remaining uh, slides, and then uh, and then call yeah. it a day. Just, just yeah. to uh, just just for your your latter portion of your career work, and then oh. we'll. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I actually have all four of those movies behind me right here. I was able to find them all, so uh, yeah, I got the old DVDs. Any, any quick stories you want to just throw out there about working for Marvel after working for DC? Or... Well, um, I mean, it's like it was all because you know I worked at Frank Parr. Since uh, cops and Ghostbusters, you know, like I hired Frank as a background guy and hired him uh, to do boards, I think, on, um, yeah, Ghostbusters. He was doing boards for me. So, mm-hmm. you know, so he ended up on Batman, too. And then after that, he, he it was like Frank would, you know, call me up once in a while when he had a sequence that he really wanted, you know, mostly like the climaxes, like an Iron Man and, you know, <laughs> Doctor Strange. But... The one where he hired me and Butch Lukig um, was Hulk versus Thor, or mm-hmm. Hulk versus. Yeah. And we did Hulk versus Wolverine. It's like, oh, I want to do Wolverine, you know. <laughs> and uh, we were hired, you know, we're getting a salary, you know, a weekly salary for like a certain amount of weeks. And both Butch and I, Frank's going, all you got to do is just do some design work. All you got to do is do some design work, and couldn't help ourselves we I, i'm if there's a fight between hulk and i'm gonna draw bruce banner changing into the hulk i'm gonna storyboard that so we ended up storyboarding <laughs> chunks of that show. i remember when that came out i really enjoyed it it was yeah. uh almost like oh, a back yeah. pilot for a show that you uh that for like shows that would end up coming out yeah. later too and i think one of them was uh agents of uh, smash which you had worked on as well yeah uh I won't do it. <laughs> he just sort of worked on it. But yeah, the yeah, I actually I, mean, I, I actually was a really big fan of these animated movies. I wish that they would have continued yeah. going because it was kind of like Same a thing. it was a, it was like a mini MCU. Wolverine. Hulk versus Wolverine. I mean, I got to do like the only the only difference is, is like I did naked Wolverine going down the hallways and tearing through the guards, <laughs> you know, based on the Barry Smith cartoon. Mm-hmm. They changed it. They put his put him in costume, yeah. And uh, and I actually did the stuff where uh, where Logan shows up, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um, and I wanted him in a the Mountie uniform in the red mm-hmm. oh, RCMP yeah. uniform, but mm-hmm. they wouldn't do it. You know, it's like, oh, oh damn it. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I like like watching both of those, and the Hulk versus Wolverine one was definitely the superior of the two. You could the, yeah. the animation was so like so much cooler looking. The fight yeah. was so much better choreographed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, you know, I, I, I say choreograph, but drawn, you know, it's like the yeah. way that it was drawn. But I, I uh, think the only the only problem I really had with that, and it's like, it's, again, I'm not directing. I'm, I mean, I was storyboarding like chunks that didn't get changed very much. You know, it's like it's all there. But the only thing I would say about that was Marvel had the problem of there's just that one character too many. And Deadpool right. being in there is like, uh, oh, he has guy. the best line. Oh, yeah. he, has the... <laughs> he has hey, the wo- best line. Hey, Wolverine, he just... I shot you. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like the best line in the whole thing. Yeah, he does. It's like, and it's, and it's, but I'm just like, how many characters are, do you have to have everyone? Do you... I think you forgot somebody, you know? It's like... <laughs> I, if they, if they were going to drop anyone from that one, I think it could have been Omega Red. He didn't really do that much. That was yeah. like the one character that kind of just hung out for the sake of being there. Yeah, um, so it, that that would be my. But then again, I didn't really have much to do with that aspect of it. I just mm-hmm. boarded most of the. I I boarded uh, a lot of the stuff that I did was the uh, Hulk 
uh, the uh, Wolverine tracking. That was cool. The Hulk. Oh, yeah. And then it changes into Bruce Banner and you got to do Bruce Banner is like the sniveling guy who's, mm -hmm. what am I going to do? You know, I keep turning into this monster and <laughs> disasters happen around me. Man, I have to go back. Now I have to go back and rewatch this. I'm going to spend the rest of my day watching animated <laughs> stuff. Probably. Yeah. And then uh, Wolverine else? being Wolverine is like, come along, you cry baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not the right thing to do at the moment. <laughs> so our, our next slide, because you kind of waved off part of it, is probably not going to make too much sense. But uh, you also did work on Spectacular Spider-Man. Yeah. I which, is a, which was a very popular show that a lot of people are upset didn't continue. Yeah, yeah that was uh, because that was done at Sony, who <laughs> had the rights. But all the time, you know, uh, the Disney Marvel thing was going on, uh, which was not public knowledge. Yeah. So Spectacular Spider-Man in the third season, you know, the net or the the next season that didn't happen. It's like Greg Weissman's story arc. I mean, it was it was great, you know. And it's like the oh, and like the the whole evolution of the Goblin, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And 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 on that one, um, I got involved with it. I was hired by Vic, who was someone that I hired back at Deke on Alf, you know. And Vic now he's like he's producing these shows, and uh, he hired me to do the uh, arrival of the Green Goblin. And man, <laughs> no, it's like I really enjoyed. I I did enjoy working at Sony. That was a, and that was a good crew too. Spider Man always translated well into cartoons. <clears throat> so I like the one yeah. in the '90s, and, and oh, each one of them has a very yeah. distinct look, which is always awesome. Like you could tell the the difference between each one of them very very yeah. easily. No, mm -hmm. and and the Sean McLaughlin character designs, by the way, were uh, really fun to draw. You know, <laughs> and it was again, again, it was like it was good crews. You know, it was like the same same people. I was working with Adam Van Wyk, uh, who's work. You know, I've worked with uh, uh, many times, and but uh, I worked with him on that one. And it's like what in Craven got to do the first episode. Oh yeah, of Craven. <laughs> Um, some of the animation I wish could be better, you know, but Hey, it's like, I think that came out quite well. I, I really yes, wanted to do very more popular. Craven. Yeah. It's Incredibly very, very popular. popular. Yeah. yeah. I, I wanted mean, to do more Craven. I want, I want to you know, cause, cause he, he is, he is such a bastard, you know, mm -hmm. but he is a romantic creature, mm -hmm. you know, he, yeah. he does. And it's like the thing they did in that where he transforms, you know, into, yeah. And then he's got a, and he has that line where he's like, he's rescued by his girlfriend, you know, you know, the voodoo princess. <laughs> and he, he wakes up in her arms and it's like, uh, this, this transformation. She's like, shh, it suits you. <laughs> it's like, hey, this chick, that's, that's my girl. Put a you ring know? on it at that point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what else do we got? Uh, yeah, sorry. we just got, um, the, uh, Stretch Armstrong and the Flex Fighters and the uh, yeah. Scooby Doo a bit. So, yeah, you I mean, work a lot of on Scooby Doo as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. yeah, I love Scooby Doo. Oh, same. You know? I I adore Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo is yeah. probably one of my favorite cartoons ever. I think I've seen every single version of it. And yeah. well, so the question I would ask you would be, um, how is it that you have all of these existing IPs, of course, who have um, gone through different versions? How do you approach bringing a newer version to a newer audience? Um, you know, how, how would you? Well, I don't, uh, it's it's really not because, like, uh, I mean, the thing, the scoop, like, for instance, the Scoobies that I worked on, mm -hmm. um, we always went to the Iwo Takamoto, the original character designs. Mm. You may update their clothing or whatever, but it's still the same crew, it's still, you know, it's and again. Scoobies are fun because of the Iwo Takamoto designs. Oh yeah, um, and and the the characters are so. When the show fails, is when they don't let the characters be the characters. Agreed, one hundred percent. Fred and Daphne. It's like you know when they're. It's like the the, the shows that fail are when they try and explain. You know, well, what's he doing with an ascot? It's like. You guys just get, you don't have to talk about yeah, it. You don't have to talk about it. Let's see the monster. 
-hmm. you know yeah. let's see the That's mystery it. let them be themselves you know yeah <laughs> it's like you know it's, and and i one thing that i that i did on um the scoobies that i did was i actually have moments where uh where scooby is you know it's clear that this is shaggy's pet this is his mm -hmm. dog he will to reassure him when scooby gets scared he'll scratch his head or something you know there'll be yeah. like little touches like that then of course yeah. scooby will like instantly make snowboards out of a pile of wreckage <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Scooby -Doo, I think it's timeless it just it's it's just yeah. great and uh, it gives so many good life lessons to kids and even adults you know growing up I just think that it's it's one of those classics that yeah. I'm glad and, was created and there's there's some of the TV shows I'm not going to name what they are but it's like where they it's like where it's they just jump the shark and yeah. you know like where they're creating some bizarre backstory for Fred and his dad and the family mm -hmm. and, inventing oh, yeah. all these things that don't need to be invented like on pirates ahoy one of the first ones that i worked on um tim conroy tim conroy comrade as is um as tim conroy as uh fred's dad mm -hmm. brilliant brilliant yeah. casting you know it's like you don't have to explain anything more you know, this is his dad, him and Fred. You know, it's like they have secret handshakes and stuff like that. <laughs> they're, they're just as goofy as Fred is. Now we see why. Yeah. You don't have to go into the backstory. You don't have to invent like his, you know, the, the town is relying yeah. on him. It's like, you don't need any of that shit. <laughs> I know just which one you're Fred, talking about. <laughs> yeah, just let Fred be Fred, you know, and Shaggy is Shaggy. And it's like Shaggy, it's like he's... He's not stoned, mm -hmm. you know. He's not a drug addict. He's just weird. He's just naturally stoned, you know. Right. It's, it's just his demeanor, and it's, it's just, just how, how he is. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, and Velma, you know, it's like, it, it, uh, yeah, you don't have to. <laughs> just like where they're sitting there trying to explain away all this stuff, it's like, please, can you just let the kids enjoy themselves? Yeah, just let the kids be kids, and that's it. You don't really need yeah. an engrossing, huge mystery about this, like no. a conspiracy plot. It's like, no, I'm here for Scooby Doo and the Mystery Gang to be Scooby Doo and the Mystery yeah. Gang. That's, that's pretty much it. And, and people are like, I worked on uh, Shadow Goblins, and I really enjoyed that one because. The mon it's the only one where the monsters are real. Yeah, you know, yes. it takes place, yeah. but it's magic is real, and it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, there's nothing wrong with that because yeah. the characters are still characters. Actually, when confronted with an actual fairy and actual supernatural happenings, Velma just shuts down and passes <laughs> out because it's like this is real and just boom. Like, yeah, yeah like her, just... her logic the logical point of her brain just can't handle the yeah. truth it's like, yeah. mm -hmm. logical brain <laughs> shutting down yeah boom she's gone <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's a very velma thing she would react that way you mm -hmm. know yeah so anyway I think we have uh just one more slide and then yeah just can... one more it's just the uh the transformers your time with tra oh, yeah. transformers shows which I, i'm a fan of transformers are a, a mutual friend of ours uh little platoon not as big of a fan we talked about this last night but um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh, i think you, you mentioned to us yesterday that this was your uh your longest gig or something like that the, the, well yeah it's like bots. i worked i worked at hasbro um longer than i think i've worked at any studio um, starting with uh, G.I. Joe Renegades. Okay. I was I was hired on to direct uh, G.I. Joe Renegades. And then I was working on Transformers Prime a bit. Mm -hmm. But the one that I actually was on the longest was Rescue Bots. And uh, that was, you know, it's like it's a kid's show. Yeah. But the scripts, uh, Brian Holfield and Nicole Dubuque, who uh, worked with on I uh, worked with Nicole on Spectacular Spider-Man, mm -hmm. so I knew her, and it's like the scripts were very they're very kid friendly. Um, but the the thing that I really liked about Rescue Bots was there was this real family feel. Yeah, like Mark Hamill was there. Uh, you know, Maurice Lamarche again, who I worked with on Stripperella. Um, the voice cast, you know, it was, it was really. Omari da Costa, you know, just it was just such great 
you know, it, it, and it was one of those shows where I worked with Elon, who was the voice of uh, Cody in the show. You know, you actually wa- got to watch him grow up. Mm. You know, him and Diamond, they, they're the voice actors that were, when I first met them, they were kids. And then the last time I saw Elon, I'm looking up at him. It's like, hey there, <laughs> you turn into a <laughs> strapping young man, aren't you? You know, um, and it was just, it was like, that was actually a very fun, good group of people to work with, good artists. You know, I have my complaints about the Canadian animation studio, but it's, you know, it's limited budget. And, but what we ended up with, I thought came across very well. And, um, when I would go to comic conventions, um, I'd be people, I'd be talking to people like, you know, about your age, you know, mm-hmm. you know, about Batman and stuff. And they would mm-hmm. have their kids with them. And they said, what are you doing now? And I'm like, well, I'm doing rescue bots. Rescue bots. <laughs> ah! And they're like, yeah. 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 Every day it's like, yeah, we got it. When rescue bots comes on, the whole family sits down and we watch rescue bots, you know? Mm. So it was very popular. It was very, very popular. And, and, um, and I totally got it, you know, and, and, and it's like, yes, kid friendly, kid friendly, uh, episodes, but like, uh, like, uh, like Jason Marsden, for instance, there was one where they have the, uh, totally ridiculous idea, but just like where the caveman gets thought out. Mm-hmm. And Jason Marsden, who's you know does usually does like a regular, he's a regular voice in it. He does this great interpretation of a caveman, who's an intelligent guy, but he's a caveman, you know. Mm-hmm. And so he has like this language that he's speaking, and he mimics birds, and he mimics you know. It's like, and I thought, but that's really a that is a good character, yeah. you know. And so Rescue Bots had a lot of that going on. And I was on that for longer than I think any show I've ever been on. And yeah. it was, it was, and, and that that's something that you don't get to do very often in this business because it's usually just cut and dried. And on that show, you got to, it was like you got to see the same people every day and you got to work with the same people every day. Yeah, and so that's uh, a family. It was, it, was, it was nice. Yeah, it was a nice family feeling. Hmm. Nice. What's going on at Hasbro nowadays? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're I'm trying to speaking. set up their cinematic universes. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, they they were doing that back then too. You know, mm. that's that's what uh, that's GI Joe Renegades. By the way, um, the reason why that show didn't get picked up was that they stole this next season for the GI Joe movie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know okay. where where. Cobra takes over the government. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but only the Joes know. <laughs> they uh, just they just said it. Nope, we're taking that. Boom, and they put it in the live action movie. No, oh. you know? I just want to say, uh, uh, Tara, that Fiona's trying to steal your job here, and she's trying to remind us to let Kevin plug his shit. <laughs> yeah, we have to let. The... So Kevin, here plug we do money. something where I say, you know, the guest has to plug their shit, and you basically <laughs> just you you give us, you know, um, a rundown of maybe some of upcoming projects that you're doing that you want people to know about. Oh, just you know, put them on the wow. radar. Well, I God. See, animation wise, I'm really since the strikes and stuff, mm-hmm. I am not working on I haven't really been working on any um animated shows coming up right now. Um I've been doing comics with Paul Dini and Alan Burnett. I did uh, right. the last one I did was uh Batman the Adventures Continue, but I don't yes. know if there's gonna be any more of those. I really enjoyed doing that. Um you know, again, Harley Batman team up. I'm happy. You so, know, so the tentative project name is now Batman. The adventures might continue. Is that what it's? it's like? <laughs> yes, I I don't know. Um, I mean, there's I, I've been talking. That's about... a good comic, by the way. Yeah. Anybody who likes oh. this show, that's a great comic. Just, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's that that it it this the obviously it looks exactly like almost exactly like the show. Uh, it it. It, a, a lot of and they did uh, DC's been doing that with a lot of things where they've been continuing stories. They did Batman eighty nine, Super yeah. uh, Superman seventy eight, and then that's kind of in that same vein. Yeah, and it's like I, I uh, so, uh, and there there are projects I'm doing on my own. Um, 
but again, nothing, no animated. I'm not rich. <laughs> you know, I can't finance feature films and stuff. Um, and uh, Warner Brothers, it's like I they haven't hired me for anything, you know. Right. Well, Warner Brothers is in up. the process of, of turning over their entire studio. <laughs> it's so it's, yeah. yeah. It's, who knows? You might get a call you know, pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, who knows? And Marvel's in the same shape. It's like God mm -hmm. knows what's going on with Marvel animation. Um, yeah, there hasn't been much in, in the way of Marvel animation. They really no. dialed back Marvel in animation. In years, yeah. yeah. In the last, in oh, the last yeah. few years. No, they, again, it's like, it, it, it's as far as stuff that's coming up, you know, there are comics that I'm doing on my own, um, it, but it's just things that I'm doing here. You know, go at home. Go see myself. him at a convention and get his autograph. That's, yes. that's what you should do. Yes. And that's, and I, I have mentioned I the do, show that you watched. And I, <laughs> and I, there are conventions coming up that I'm going to be a guest at. Um, mm -hmm. One Kansas City is coming up. There's uh, one I'm going to be going to, I think, Virginia Beach. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, I was just been talking with a heroic fine arts gallery. Um, and they're sponsoring me for a, a bunch of these shows. And, uh, you know, and I, I'm making prints. Mm -hmm. um, I have prints and uh, postcards and stuff made of just artwork that I've been doing lately mm -hmm. like nice. there's one there's one uh one series of illustrations and i i really want to try and do this as a comic book coming up but of course there's the problem but it's like where the joker i was thinking of say the joker okay we're gonna break from the mark hamill character what would have been in what joker would have been like if vincent price played him hmm you know, okay. so <laughs> I, I have I this like thing it. where he keeps where he he be he's become obsessed with Shakespeare. Oh, <laughs> is it the Kansas City Comic Con you're going to be at? That's the one. That's what I believe asking. so. I believe so. But I am going to be at. So check out the cons. It's like there's there's yeah. several cons on conventions that I'm going to be a guest at, and um, yes, and I'm and the prints and stuff I'm bringing. And and, I, yeah, like I'm doing um, like I'm doing like one where it's like to be or not to be Batman, you know. Do you hmm. have a, a like a, a link that you sell and like ship uh, them at uh, for anything? Because like um, or... we can throw that on the um, when we repost this on the repost channel, that usually just, gets more views. We could throw the link in there for you. Yeah, um, it's like I don't, I see, I don't, I'm not that sophisticated, but okay, I, <laughs> but I'll I just am put a big it. disclaimer in in the uh, in the yeah. um, the no, description. You, Go to the you, damn cons. <laughs> yeah, no, but people can contact me on Facebook, you know, um, mm -hmm. which is uh, Altieri, uh, you know, just look up, you, you'll know it's me, but it's like Altieri Arts um, mm -hmm. and Art, Altieri Arts and Instagram, mm -hmm. you know, so we'll, just we'll, look, we'll throw the links up on the on the repost. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's like I, I am on Instagram and I am on Facebook. Um, and if you want to contact me, you know, I do commissions and stuff. But you know, but again, I'm not very sophisticated with that. I don't have, I don't take credit cards and all that stuff. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, sh I should get smarter about that. But I, but I'm I'm spending my time coming up with ideas and writing and drawing. That's better. You know? Yeah, well, it's, um, I think it's better. But yeah, I mean, I, I, we've kept you for almost double the time we originally talked. I hope, oh, damn you. I hope it hasn't been a problem. <laughs> um, but, damn you. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll bring it home now. I just want to I wanna first thank the chat for hanging out, giving us such great questions. Uh, thank my co-host, the Uninspired oh, Reviewer, for being really good course. with these, these, uh, these slides and getting these videos prepped for us and all that. And yeah, thank you to most... everyone who sent in videos, of course. Uh... Thank, thank you to the chat as well for coming and staying with us. And, of course, Dark Hour, bring it home. Well, I, I mostly, I, I want to, over the top, I want to thank Kevin for coming here. Uh, you know, I, I kind of annoyed him into doing this. It was, uh, I, yes. I, chased, I chased him around several uh, social media uh, uh yeah, like versions, but uh, <laughs> I guess I hope it was worth it. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for uh, for coming on, being our first interview. Thank you. This was this was a great experience for I uh, for me. I, uh, I, no I problem. You. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. So we're gonna have to we'll we'll bring it home with our uh, our outro oh, yeah. here. Thank you and bye bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.